Welcome to Mac and Jack Talks NBA. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's episode. Today, again, we want to talk about two topics. The first one is what is this NBA Top Shot, shot this blockchain based platform where people are selling non fungible tokens, also known as NFT, where Highlights go for 20,000 USD for a LeBron highlight. And our second topic is about yesterday's terrible performance from the Golden State Warriors against the Toronto Raptors. So I'll give it to you, Max. So what do you want to talk about the NFT? Yeah, I want to talk about the NFT and the whole Bitcoin craze and just want to give my thoughts on whether I believe it is something people should invest in or it is a fad. Spoiler, I think it's a big fad. So a little background. NBA Top Shot is the official partnership with the NBA.com. It is a blockchain-based platform that allows people all over the world with internet connection to buy and sell these verified NFTs that have specific versions and numbers of them and officially licensed. And you could trust it through this blockchain technology. It's a joint venture that began around July of 2019 between the NBA and the NBA Player Association with a company called Dabber Labs, where they created something called the NBA Top Shot. Essentially, you could really think of it as using blockchain technology with NFT to have these virtualized trading sport cards. Because it's online, you could get things such as highlights, video clips, and extra content and electronic information about it where you don't get with a trading card. How it works is really the NBA cuts these highlights and then Daper Labs decides how many of these each highlight they want to sell and then number them. So they're not really actually unique unique. There may be some specific plays that are unique at a certain angle or there may be some certain plays. The best I could think in mind for this kind of NFT is if with NBA, you can have the play where Ray Allen took a few steps back and then shot the three-pointer over the San Antonio Spurs in the game six of the finals a few years back, pushing the game to game seven and allowing LeBron James to win the championship. I would say that would be an NFT moment that could sell for a lot of price. But to me, still in today's technology in 2021, without a virtual headset, Without a virtual world, I don't see how you could really flex on these people. With art and with trading cards, I initially did not understand how there could be value in that before as well. But I really see there is a long history of asset trading. You could hide a lot of income. It is easy to, for example, transfer $100 million on a piece of Van Gogh art rather than having it transfer as cash. Or transfer it in assets such as a yacht, in gold bars, in houses, and there's a historical value associated with it. With the NBA, I'm not really too sure because you could see all of these highlights on YouTube. You could download the games, and if you're good enough with video editing, you could splice it and dice it and make your and create your own NFT. And yes, it won't be verified by the NBA or by NBA Top Shot, but in a sense, you could even have an even more improved, more specified, highlighted clips that the NBA Top Shot doesn't, won't even have. And I would argue that that is even more valuable. And just because it's not verified serially through the blockchain, I could see how there could be some value in that. Another scenario where I could see a highlight in that is if there's virtual headsets, for example, maybe you have an Oculus Rift or a Microsoft HoloLens and we could start communicating to other people and start seeing each other's virtual virtual houses, virtual art pieces. Then you could kind of show it off and then maybe I could see there's some value in it. Or there's the argument from Gary V or from Fortnite where when you're playing a game, people essentially already pay for these skins that don't really do much in the real world, but just looks fancy and looks cool. That I understand as well, but until it's been incorporated into a virtual reality, into a game, or there's some backing of actual 
trading moments that are very unique, I just don't really see the value of, on it. And some people argue that there are many rich people, institutional funds. There's Michael Jordan, Mark Cuban, and Kevin Durant putting money in. But I would argue that the amount of funds that they're putting it in is like somebody who makes, let's say, $50,000 a year putting in $100 in as an investment. These people have so much money and they have a bit of what I call FOMO investing where there's a fear of missing out. There's the fear of, let's say, missing out on Bitcoin and its early days. And now that Bitcoin is really blown up or Ethereum prices or crypto in general, again, are up on the rise in the last really a year and a half. I, I really see that as a protection, as a hedge and as a diversification. It really, to me, does not have the fundamentals of owning, let's say, a rental property of a commercial property of a business or even part ownership of a company or a stock where there's actual growth and there's actual cash flows and market share you're essentially buying something to hold maybe a few years later to sell it at an even higher price to make that type of money and also i understand that there are high costs with nft uh, the transaction cost with the blockchain there's, it's sometimes very slow, and if you want it to be sped up, you have to pay a lot of money. It might cost a lot of electricity costs and things like that as well. The pro side of the NFT, though, I see is being able to help artists sell a lot of their artwork easier. We have a lot of uh, artists out there, freelancers. Normally, you would have to sell and package the product. You have to ship it. You have to buy insurance for it, make sure it doesn't get lost, make sure it doesn't get damaged, and then sign it with your own signature, and it could be forges. With the blockchain, it takes away a little bit of that real-world transaction and friction, and it is blockchain verified. I'm not sure yet, however, how people could understand this verification, or if it could be forged. Maybe it can, maybe it cannot. But so far, I believe yeah it's a little bit ridiculous to have a lebron james highlight for twenty thousand usd on something that i could see and even watch the whole game of yeah so let's just give it out uh, from a outsider or non-professional perspective just from a fan's perspective i believe at least having a trade card as nelson stated is much more valuable because you're able to see it you're able to touch it and you're able to appreciate it and then when whenever you feel like you don't want it anymore. You can at least resell it for a higher value than when you purchased it. However, you need to pay in order to just get a highlight from a different angle. We all know those and like the NBA fans already need to pay for the league passes already and the angles of the game is already let's be honest, it's pretty garbage. I wouldn't want to pay for that stuff. But anywho, like you need to pay to see highlights when you can. When there are so many people who just create YouTube accounts, do their own cuts. I'm pretty sure there's much more better cuts than the actual NBA highlights because all the NBA highlights only show is just fancy plays, shooting the open threes, crazy phenomenal dunks. Yeah, that's impressive, but that's only from their business perspective, merchandise standpoint. While actual fans, when they cut it, they know which you know they know which actually get fans to hype up, which area that they need to notice from. I think that is much more valuable than doing the actual NFT. And the NFT seems a bit risky because the technology and their like regulation is still not mature, from what I know. So I don't know how that will work in the future, but I don't think it's really a good idea. To do the NFT. Alright, so let's get to the next topic. Yeah, for those who actually saw the Golden State Warriors versus Toronto Raptors game yesterday, I and mean, whoever actually paid to go see that game, man, I feel sorry for you because as a Golden State fan, you'll probably be very devastated by seeing that terrible, terrible performance, even without Draymond Green and Steph Curry. Steph Curry, yeah, he's your leader from the offensive end. Draymond Green is your defensive leader, but to play like that without any, like, passion, fire, 
even them themselves know that it's embarrassment because you got blown out like crazy by 50 plus points, nearly 60 points. You really didn't really do much damage. And you're and you paid a you're, you're you paid a guy like Andrew Wiggins just to score 15 points, two assists, four rebounds in 26 minutes. Bro, you got to do better. And even with Steph Curry and Clay being out, you really need to step up your game. And against the Toronto Raptors, who was even without Kyle Lowry, you really only had Fred Flambleet and Pascal Siaka and maybe Chris Boucher. Like, come on. You play, you're you playing like you're in a G League game, game instead. I'm pretty sure G League games are probably much more competitive than what I saw yesterday. And Kelly Uber Jr., damn, bro, you're fucking garbage. Work on your fucking game, man. You're playing 18 minutes. You only score 9 points, 7 rebounds, 1 assist. Come on, even a two-way contract, Nicole Mannion is playing better than you. Like, what's up with that, man? Like... I, I wouldn't even call myself a pro just to like if you if you're getting outdone by a person who's playing on a two way contract. Well, and oh, not to mention James Wiseman, bro. What was that? Thirty one minutes. You, you keep complaining about not getting enough minutes. All these other stuff, and then you're out with injuries protocols. You only score nine points, five rebounds, and two assists. How are you even a top three pick? What about you? What do you see? There are many, many things that I see. The first thing that I wanted to mention is something that I talked about in private with Jack. In my opinion, James Wiseman is the worst of the top five picks. I like Halliburton. You guys know I like LaMelo Ball. I think as of today, right now, he is the best rookie. And him and Anthony Edwards has the highest ceiling. I like Anthony Edwards as well. James Wiseman is actually, I would say, a decent player if he was not a number two pick. For a number two pick, for a center, seven footer, with no other centers stealing your thunder and the Golden State Warriors, you just got to do better. Like Jack said, 31 minutes, nine points, five rebounds. Five rebounds. You're seven feet tall. The Toronto Raptors do not have any center. They have Aaron Baines and Pascal Siakam. And Chris Boucher, who is skinny. I, it's just, you just got to work harder. I mean, Kelly Oubre out-rebounded you with seven. Eric Pachel has six. So, you just got to work better, work more on your game. To me, he's not mobile. He can't shoot. His shooting form is awkward. He's slow. The only thing that has going for him is his length. So I don't know. Maybe he's one of those big men that's going to take a few seasons for him to get his feet wet. For him to really understand how he plays. But so far, I'm quite disappointed. It's lackluster. I've watched his college highlights as well. And he plays very similarly as the way he plays now. Which shows that he hasn't really made much improvements. Defense, defensively wise and setting pick wise, he's not solid. He cannot really pass either. So I don't know. This might be a pick that the Golden State Warriors might be having some regrets about. Maybe they wish they traded that pick away for somebody else. Maybe package that pick with a Kelly Oubre for a Nikola Vucicic. That was something that would have been better for that team right now. But this is looking back. And now going forward... I I really don't have much to say. The the G League Warriors, that's what I'm going to call them without Stephon Curry. They're pretty much the G League Warriors. Even with Draymond Green, they're, they're just total garbage. They were actually competitive in the first quarter, 26-27. And then it was really in the second and third quarter where they got completely blown out. Second quarter, the, the G League Warriors scored 16 points. The Raptors scored 35 in the third quarter, after the halftime break, I'm sure Kurt yelled at the whole team. Team still did not wake up. The team scored 14 points, and the Raptors scored 46 points. So that is how you get that huge discrepancy. The G League Warriors play with no heart. It's something that's been plaguing Andrew Wiggins since pretty much his first year in the league. 
That's why players like Jimmy Butler gets frustrated with him. That's why Tom Thibodeau always yells at him. And I can see why nobody wants to really play with him sometimes. He's quite inconsistent. He has the talent. He has the explosiveness. He's still pretty young. But it's that inconsistency, the lack of focus, that really frustrates a lot of his teammates and frustrate fans. Yeah, and for Kelly Uber Jr., like you might be very good when you were in the Phoenix Suns or even the, when you were drafted out from the uh, Washington Wizards, but you're playing for a championship organization. You're, you really need to step up your game. It's really no excuse to have that kind of performance. And for the fast, uh, fast break points, it was disappointing because the Golden State Warriors had zero fast break points especially for a team who emphasizes on fast pace, moving the ball, and Toronto Raptors score, got 24 fast break points. And you had six turnovers already, which is pretty bad, you know? Like, you really need to clean up your mess. Steve Carter, I'm not sure what you're planning, you know? Maybe you should change up your uh, coaching uh, playbook, you know? Because apparently... Things are not working because, yeah, when Stephen Curry and Draymond Green are playing, you you might be ba uh, battling for the eighth seed only. But once without either or of those two, you're pretty much worse than a G League team because G League always plays more with more passion, trying to earn a spot in the NBA while you're already in the NBA. But you're playing like you're on the playground, you know, get a uh, like playing with uh, little kids, you know, like beating them up, you know, like that's just embarrassing. I have, I'm at a little loss of words with that, you know? Yeah, I would say there is a bit of appreciation and case for actually how good Stefan Curry is. Sometimes he's overrated. Sometimes he's underrated, but we really saw how the last few months when Stephon Curry was playing hard, playing healthy, he was dragging the team along with Draymond Green, dragging these G League players, these G League Warriors, well into the 8th seed and into the 7th seed in the West. So I would say, yeah, this is really an appreciation and showing that Stephon Curry is a leader and he could lead a team and he can carry a team on his back if he really wanted to. In the later rounds of the playoffs, history shows this might not be the case. But as of right now, Stephen Curry is showing his candidacy and the reason why he was a back-to-back -back MVP. So I would say, to sum it up, in summary of our two topics, NFT, NBA Top Shot, kind of whack in my opinion. Yay or nay? Definitely a nay. The Dapper company sold crypto kitties. I really don't understand that. It's as dumb as buying Dogecoins and thinking you could be a millionaire. Maybe you might because this world is weird and whack right now. But I don't know. It's not based on fundamentals. Not based on any skills. Not based on any academic research or technical level or understanding. So that's a nay. G League Warriors, big nay for me too. Steve Kerr, I really think you need to change it up. You should be getting some pressure from the GM. The team has enough talent to be at least a 10th seed. So without Curry, you need to show your creativity in your offensive and defensive sets. You need to show your ability as a leader to rally around, to adjust and motivate your players. Maybe you need to make some trades later on. I don't know, but you got to change it up. So thanks again for listening to today's thanks episode. Thanks for listening. This is the end of today's episode. Please like, share with friends, and subscribe.